My makeup, y'all. That. Oh. Okay. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I got a laugh mic, which means I can take you now to exciting new places like my dining table. <laughs> Stay tuned for when we move over into the living room. It's exciting times ahead. I might even dare to go outside one day. If I'm feeling crazy. If the sound is bad, I mean, this is the first time I'm using it, so I hope this all works out. Um, but I apologize in advance if it's shit. Today I want to talk about orchestration books because that's a question that comes up a lot on my videos about instruments and orchestration. Some of these books are very expensive because of how comprehensive they are and they're really meant to last your lifetime, but you can also buy most of these uh, used. There's a ton of former students and libraries that are trying to get rid of these, especially the older editions. This one I got for 10 bucks when the hardcover version costs around $125 new. And as you can see, it's from a college library that sold this. So without further ado, the first book I want to talk about, of course, is the Study of Orchestration by Samuel Adler. This is the one that is used the most by conservatories and colleges in Europe and North America. I can't speak for the rest of the world, so if you're from not Europe and North America, do let me know. I want to know if this is actually used around the world. I have the third edition, but there's also a newer fourth edition, and it's quite the book. Uh, I mean, mine has like around 850 pages. I think the fourth edition from what I'm hearing has over a thousand pages. So it's quite extensive. <laughs> There's also a workbook and other media that you can purchase with the book. Um, I didn't do that, but it's an option. So I personally love this book for a variety of reasons. First of all, I think it's very well structured and very well written. It really takes a very logical and um, unpretentious approach to the topic. It was clearly written as a textbook for students by someone who understands teaching very well. The general structure is that he will give an overview over a section of the orchestra, then he'll go into enormous detail about the individual instruments within that section, and then he'll have a chapter that focuses on arranging and orchestrating for that section. And then once he's gone over each section by itself, he has some final chapters where he goes over the orchestra as a whole with all the sections combined. There's a ton of score examples in here that you can look up to listen to what he's describing so you can put a sound to the words. And I love that Adler stays humble in his text. He'll tell you, you know, generally I wouldn't advise you to do this and that with this instrument, but here's an example of a composer completely disregarding that and doing the opposite, and here's why that works in this context. The one thing that bothered me as a student was that there's really only 50 to 100 pages dedicated to the full orchestra at the end, which I think is the most important part. Um, Arranging for the individual sections is easier than balancing a whole orchestra properly, and I felt like I just wanted more information than I was given. Overall, the book focuses a bit more on the study of instruments than the study of orchestration, and I just wish there were more chapters at the end, basically, because the information that there is, is just golden. That being said, this is currently the most comprehensive and up-to-date book on orchestration out there, so I would recommend this 100%. Brand new, it retails for $150, but again, you can buy it used. If you're buying older editions to save money, just stay away from the first edition, because that one actually had a lot of mistakes in it. So yeah, let me know in the comments, do you love this, do you hate this? Yes? No? Why? The next one is Orchestration by Walter Piston. This kind of used to be what study of orchestration is now. It was written in the 50s and was basically used as the standard book in colleges and at conservatories for orchestration. 
It's a little stuck in its time, both when it comes to what the instruments can do, but also in terms of writing style. It's structured in a similar way as Study of Orchestration, where it spends a lot of time talking about the instruments first, and then in the final chapters it goes over actual orchestration. I like that last bit the most, because Piston has a slightly different approach to the orchestra than Adler has, and so kind of getting that other perspective on the orchestra is very helpful and, you know, it's always good to get different views and approaches to the same thing. There are some minor things in here that study of orchestration doesn't have, like finger positions for woodwinds and such. I'm not sure how useful that is. That would be like, you know, talking extensively about breathing techniques. That's really for the players to know, not necessarily the composer or orchestrator. But overall, the information contained in this book is good, just not as extensive and up-to-date as Study of Orchestration. Personally, and I know a lot of people love this book, so feel free to disagree with me here, but personally, I'm not a fan of Piston's writing style. It feels unnecessarily complicated, first of all. Even though I already know the information in this book, I find that sometimes I have to reread a sentence several times to kind of get what he's trying to say. Like, if there's a simple way of saying something, Piston often chooses the opposite, like just the most convoluted way of saying it. <laughs> and you know from my videos and from my own teaching style that I really prefer a more <laughs> straightforward approach to things. There's also occasionally an air of condescension in this book from Professor Harvard, and, you know, we all know how I think about that. And he also sometimes states his own opinion as fact, which in educational texts I find a little problematic. It's certainly not ideal. But overall, a good book, if a little outdated and a bit of a dry read at times. It retails new for around $70 to $125. Uh, depending on what version you get, hardcover or not. Um, but there's a ton of used ones out there. Um, like I said, I got this one for $10. <laughs> so um, definitely look for used ones. So yeah, what do you guys think about this one? I know there are some people out there that really, really love this book. And I, I'm not connecting with it. Um, but if, if you like this, why do you like this? <laughs> What What is it? What is it about this book that you love? Tell me. Because maybe I'm missing something. Who knows? Then we got another one of my personal favorites, which is Principles of Orchestration by Korsakoff. Not everybody likes this, um, but I love it. I'll tell you why. As mentioned earlier, um, when I read the study of orchestration as a student, I kind of wanted more of that final, of those final chapters about orchestration. Um, and this book kind of fulfills that for me. It kind of fills that hole. Unlike the other books, this one skips over the study of instruments almost entirely. Like, it just dives right in. It even says in the foreword um, that he wanted to start with the instruments and he had already started writing that, but then he realized if he was going to write about the instruments, that's going to be a whole nother book and it would get way too long and way too extensive. Um, to the point where he'd never get to the actual juicy part, namely the orchestration. So he just assumes that you have a different book that <laughs> talks about the instruments or that you somehow already know about them, because he just goes right for it. This book has a very, very strong focus on volume balancing the orchestra, um, using the colors, uh, instrument combinations, textures, that sort of thing. It also goes into voicings and all that other good stuff. It just answered a lot of leftover questions that I had after reading the study of orchestration. And again, it has a very different approach to the orchestra compared to the other two books. So I really like that. I like getting different perspectives on the same subject. The first half of the book is text, and then the second half is all score examples of what he's been talking about. As mentioned, I love it and I would recommend this 100%, but more as an additional book to something like the Study of Orchestration, because Korsakoff's book alone is not as comprehensive. It contains a lot less information. 
um, and having been first published in 1913, it's a product of its time very much. Some of the limitations and instruments he mentions are outdated now. Um, the newest edition is from the 60s, I believe, but I don't know how revised that was compared to um, the first published version. But where it helped me a lot was understanding how to balance the volumes of the sections better and how to combine different colors and textures more effectively. Because since we're using sample libraries a lot these days, I found that difficult to grasp at first, because samples don't really represent these things correctly. This book currently retails for about $20 to $30, so it's also much more affordable than the other two. And then we got another one by very famous composers, Hector Berlioz and Richard Strauss, The Treatise on Instrumentation. I have no real opinions about this one, to be honest. It was one of the first, if not the first, instrumentation book of its kind, first published in 1844, so it's really old. It focuses a lot on the instruments and less on orchestration, as the title already suggests. But if you're interested in lush German romanticism of that time, it's a good read. But it doesn't feel like it brings, you know, a lot of new things to the table compared to the other books. And this currently retails new for around $30. And then we have a book by an actual film composer, namely Sounds and Scores by Henry Mancini. Now this one is different, very different. Because if you are familiar with Henry Mancini's writing style, you know that he was very much embedded in jazz band, the old Hollywood style, big band, that type of thing. Like the other books, it goes over the instruments and then some arranging and orchestration techniques, but it does it very differently. It focuses a lot more on band type instruments first, it gets to the strings last, um, and obviously just focusing on a very different setting. If you're interested in that sort of thing, this is a really good book to have. If you want to know how the old Hollywood jazz band style from Mancini's time was done, um, he has a great way of showing this. Uh, this is certainly for you. It feels niche enough for me to consider this more of an additional book to something like Study of Orchestration because it doesn't really talk about orchestration uh, in the classical orchestra sense. But the information contained in here is absolutely great. It currently retails new for around $40. Now we got a few honorable mentions that I don't have on hand, but that I either used to have or that have been highly recommended to me, so I want to talk about those as well. There's the Essential Dictionary series. This one has a special place in my heart. I used to own this during my conservatory time. I don't have the hard copies anymore, but it was a constant companion during that time. There's one about orchestration, one about music notation, and then one about music in general. They are dictionaries, so they're written as such. So it's a just very different reading experience than the other books. I just thought they were very helpful to have on hand. Um, especially like if I was sitting in a class and I didn't understand a specific terminology or you know it was clear everybody else understood something or I quickly needed to reference an instrument range or transposition or anything like that. Um, it was just a great book to quickly get that information without interrupting the class. Sometimes in between classes as well I would just randomly open pages and just learn whatever was on that page. You know just random fun facts. <laughs> I think they also came, or some of them come in pocketbook versions, like they're really small. Um, because, you know, if you already have the study of orchestration and books like that in your backpack, you don't necessarily want to grab more books. But I remember I had some pocketbook sized ones that I could just quickly grab and you know, if I was waiting for a train or anything, waiting for a class, that's really kind of cool to have and just, you know, quickly have information available. Because this was during a time when we did not have smartphones in our pockets. So <laughs> I don't know how useful these books are these days because they're dictionaries, obviously. But um, at the time, it was super useful to have that because otherwise you'd always have to, like, take the study of orchestration and books like that with you. 
Um, now, obviously, most of that information is just contained in Google. So having a smartphone might be, <laughs> might have made that obsolete. I don't know. But at the time, we didn't have that. So that was my solution. I just love them for learning and cross-referencing and just learning random facts. Um, they each retail for around $10. I think you can also buy them all together as a collection, in which case they're like $20 or something. But so, yeah, I love them. I'd recommend them if you're into that sort of thing. We also have another older orchestration book by Cecile Forsyth. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> this one's very old. It was first published in 1914. And then the second edition is from 1935. So, you know, definitely outdated. <laughs> I remember skimming through it when I was at conservatory because our library had that. I don't think I ever actually fully read through it or anything because it felt redundant compared to the other books I already had on orchestration. And it's also outdated in terms of instruments. Instruments can do a lot more stuff now than they could during that time. So a lot of the limitations that you find in these kinds of really old books are not they don't apply anymore. However, I heard from a colleague that they thought this book was really great if you wanna learn about those really big, lush orchestrations of romanticism and like early impressionism. Um, apparently this book does a really good job of explaining that and really diving into that. So it's very much a product of its time. So if you're interested in that, apparently this book is really good at that. And this book retails new for around $20, so it's much more affordable than some of the other books. A book that is definitely on my reading list, considering how many of my peers have recommended this to me, is Textures and Timbres by Henry Brandt. I have not read this. This is on my reading list for probably the Christmas holidays or when I take some time off. It's been highly recommended by so many people and yeah, I can't wait to dig into it, but I don't know anything about it currently because I haven't read it. It currently is one of the more expensive books. It retails for $50 new. Another book that has been very much um, recommended to me by a lot of string players is Arranging for Strings by Mimi Rapson. Did I say that right? This is of course a little more limited because it's about strings but it's written by an actual string player and getting that perspective is always helpful. I haven't read it. It's also on my reading list considering how many people have been raving about this book. And obviously I also love that for once there's a book written by a woman because it's been a bit of a sausage fest over the centuries, okay? This retails new for around $23, so also one of the more affordable books. Now, you might ask why even read multiple books on orchestration. Well, that's because there isn't one approach to orchestration. There are different ways to look at the orchestra and the functions and textures and colors and balances and all that stuff. Also, the orchestra has changed over time. So getting different perspectives from different composers, orchestrators, teachers, is really crucial to understanding how it works and kind of figuring out where you fit into this. Because not every approach is gonna be good for you. Like you will read one approach and just go, oh, that makes sense to me. And you'll read another approach and go, yeah, did I really like that? I don't think I see the orchestra that way. And I don't think I wanna orchestrate with that concept in mind. So in order to find whatever works for you, it's good to get all these different perspectives in. The best way to learn orchestration is still score study though. You can read all the books in the world, but score study is gonna be the most effective thing to do. Because we're looking at hundreds of years of the orchestra and orchestration techniques, instruments that change, all this stuff. Um, it's very difficult for any author to condense all of that into one book. It'll never do the real thing justice, so I always recommend, in addition to reading books, also do score study and practice, actively practice orchestrating in these techniques as well. Like reading a book or watching a video course on this, it's not gonna be enough to fully grasp the concept behind this because it's too extensive. So you really gotta actively practice this. 
And if you can't read sheet music, you can learn that, no matter how old you are. I know it's easier when you're younger. Um, I've experienced that myself because I didn't learn all the clefs when I was younger and so I struggle with certain clefs more than others because I was playing melodic instruments in treble clef so I was struggling with the bass clef for quite a while when I started learning piano and I was struggling with reading multiple lines at the same time as well because I was used to playing a melody instrument so I was just reading horizontally one line at a time and now with piano I had to read two clefs and I had to read like vertically and horizontally at the same time. It's a very different way of doing it and since I started that later I had a really hard time with it. So I understand that the older you are the harder this is. But it's really a matter of time and practice. Just be patient. All the resources are there for free online. Uh, all you need is patience. I mean, you didn't learn to read text in a week either, so don't expect that for sheet music. Even though sheet music is actually easier to learn than reading text. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you agree with my assessments or if my opinions are totally wrong. Um, let me know if I forgot a really fantastic book that I didn't mention here about the instruments or orchestration. And uh, like and subscribe, ding the bell, buy me a coffee, yada, yada, yada. And also, go practice.